The full wave rectified sine wave voltage is applied to the circuit shown. The circuit is to the right. We need to find the circuit's response, V naught T, by using the first four non-zero Fourier series terms. So to do this, um, what we're going to do first is we need to look at this right here. We're going to need to put this into the Fourier series. And so this is what this is going to look like. We need to focus upon this. But we also, and super importantly, also need to incorporate this right here. What we're going to do is um, combine, use these two different things, these two different parts, and put them together to solve for this. So the reason that I have included this right here will also become very prevalent in a second. But let's start off with knowing that when we have a sine wave like this and we have a circuit response, we can use the H of S, right? This is what we've used before with circuit response. We have H of S and we know it's equal to V naught over V input. Okay, and this circuit that we have right here can be solved with the voltage, with the node voltage method. So we're going to combine these two impedances. We're gonna call that R naught. And we also need to convert this since we're going into the S domain, right? So this inductor is gonna be Z of L is equal to S times L. This capacitor is gonna be Z of C is equal to one over S times C. Everything else is totally okay. For now, I'm going to just substitute this as R to keep things clean. So our R naught is when we combine these two impedances and we can do this because we're, they're in parallel and the voltage across two things in parallel is exactly the same. So we have this R naught and it's gonna be equal to the um, one over the first impedance. We'll just do one over R. And then we're gonna have plus one over the next impedance, which is one over SC. So we're gonna just do SC. And then this is being raised to the negative first power. And so if we rewrite this, our R naught is gonna be equal to R divided by one plus R times S times C. And so this is our R naught. Now we need to plug this into our equation. So we know that our V naught, this is the node voltage method. Um, this was done in the previous introductory to circuit analysis, which could be found in the notes that are in the notes at the very beginning, linked below the like button in the playlist below. So we have this V naught and it's equal to the voltage input, which is VG. We are going to have the impedance of the voltage output that we're looking at. And that's going to be our R naught, right? So we're gonna have this right here. And then we are going to have our R naught again right here, plus the other impedance, which is our inductor. So we're gonna have SL. Now our R naught, what we need to do is actually replace this with what we found. We found R over one plus R times SC, and then R over one plus R times SC. Now, this is pretty messy, so to um, clean this up a little bit, we're just going to multiply the top and bottom by one plus RSC, and that will get rid of the denominator. So that is going to turn this into just an R, and that's going to turn this into just an R as well. So that transforms both of those, and then this SL right here, remember we're multiplying it in the top and bottom, we are going to have SL, this should be an L, not a C, and then we have our one plus S times C times R. And so this is gonna be our new equation. Now, let's expand this a little bit. So if we factor in our SL, we can rewrite this again. We're going to have a plus SL plus S squared times L times C times R. And so this is what we're going to have now. Um, we can rewrite this because we need to use imaginary numbers to solve for this, we can't really solve in the S, we only convert it to the S so that we can convert it into the J omega. So just as we do H J omega, that's what we're gonna do in here. We're gonna rewrite this as V naught is equal to VG. And then we're multiplying this by the R. We are going to have R plus J omega times L. 
and then um, let's actually substitute some stuff in. So this is this is a good actual spot to substitute things in once we um, transform this to J omega. So we know that our R on top is the 10 Henry's. So we know the R on top is five times uh, K ohms. So we're gonna do five times 10 to the cubed. And then we're gonna do also down here, five times 10 to the cubed. We have our plus J omega times the 10. This is from our inductor plus well actually it's not going to be a plus because we have this s squared so we're going to have j omega squared j squared since it's a square root of a negative one is just going to be a negative one so we're going to have a minus out here we're going to have omega squared times r l and i actually can't fit this all in here so i am just going to write this like this and then we could substitute values in um, for a second instead of substituting in though since we know what all of these are we can just multiply them together so we know we have LCR here. Our L is going to be the 10 Henry's. Our R is going to be the five times 10 cubed for the kilo. And then our capacitance is gonna be 2.5 times 10 to the negative six. And this is going to give us 0 0.125 right here. So this is gonna be our equation. Now we have two unknowns, the V naught is okay because if we look at our answers, we're gonna to want to find for our V naught, right? So, um, what we can do is now find our VG. And our VG, pretty cool, can be found with this right here. Now, we're going to use all of this. We're not going to use the AV. We are asked for our A average, though, so we will need to find that. Um, that's going to be super easy to find, not a lot of work. We'll be able to do that. Uh, super quick in a second. So let's start actually doing this. To find our VG, we're going to set this equal to, and now this is where this comes in. All right, we're going to fill this out inside of here. Now, this didn't come with the problem. Um, it was from a previous problem that we've done, and it can be found actually, I'll include at the top of the description linked below the like button it'll only show up if you click the like button though so you can go back to that see how we do that and actually get these values right here so once we get these values we can plug everything in so we have v of g is equal to um, remember we're not going to include our av but we do need to find our av so let's do that real quick our av is the first part right here right it's two times vm divided by pi now our VM right here is the y-axis. And so our VM is 54. So we're gonna have two times 54. Oh, it's also being multiplied by pi. And this is divided by pi. The pi's will cancel out. Two times 54 is gonna give us 108. So our V average is 108 volts. Now let's write for our VG. Our VG is gonna be equal to, now let's see this, let's see this. We have um, this four times our V max right here. So we would have four times 54 times pi. I'm just gonna write this as 216 times pi. That's what four times 54 is. And this is going to be divided by inside of here. We are going to have a pi and then a one minus four times K squared. And that is just from this part, right? Cause it's in the denominator. And then we have the summation from n equals one to infinity. And the reason why we're starting at one is because we're starting at one here and then we're going to three. So that's what that's from. I didn't really specify this, but um, this is our A of n right here. This is what we're writing in right here. Remember the A of n is right here. And if we have constants, we can factor them out of the summation. So all of these are constants, right? We're factoring out of our summation this is our a of n everything we wrote right here that's our a of n and this pi and the 54 is our v max so i hope that makes sense um so now we just need the cosine of our n and since um we're using n's instead of k i'm going to replace this with n but they're interchangeable we're going to have our omega naught and our omega naught is 2 pi over the period t times lowercase t minus the angle n. 
And so this is going to be our equation. It stems from all of this, right? And because the part that I underline in red is our V of G, um, our AN is going to be all of this part. And if we had more, we would put it in, but that's what we have. And so now we can move on to actually plugging our values in. So let's, let's just look at this part right here. Um, we don't have an angle, so we're not gonna have to worry about that. What we do have though is this T. We know our period is one over 120. So T is one over 120, right? And so what this means is that we basically have an N times two times pi. Well, that means we're going to have a cosine N times 240 times pi times T. Uh, we don't worry about the angle right here. So this is what we're going to have, right? This is going and it's gonna replace this. Now we can plug this back in since everything is simplified um, into our V naught. Also cancel out the pi's that will make things a lot easier. So now we're going back here. Our V naught is equal to, now we have our VG and our VG is 216. And then we, um, since, since we have an N right here, let's factor it back in because we're gonna have to plug this N and everything and change it a little bit. So we have 216, we are going from infinity, N is equal to one. And then inside of here, uh, we have this cosine. And as a matter of fact, we can simplify this a little bit further. We can see that no matter what we plug in for this N, we're always going to come up to either zero or like two pi. It's always gonna be an even number times pi. And that's super important because whenever we have just an even number times pi, it's basically, we can just say it's zero because cosine of zero or anything positive times pi is equal to one. Now, this wouldn't be true if we didn't have the zero right here. This zero makes whatever we have right here combined an even value, not odd. If it was odd, we would have negative, positive, negative, positive, which is why on top of this, I included this. We can see that our uh, circuit and actually, sorry, the waveform, the waveform is what we're looking at now is even. It has even symmetry because if this is our period from here to here, we have even symmetry across right here, which is one over 240, and it rotates across here, right? So that's even symmetry. Now, that means that we can just replace all of this with one, because that's all it is. It's always gonna be one, no matter what we plug in. So we have this 216 summation, we're gonna have one over are one minus four n squared. And then what we're just going to do is move this over because I am running out of room. We're going to surround this in parentheses. And then we are going to bring um, all of this down here because this is our other part that we're multiplying it by, right? We're taking VG, which we found in the gray and we're multiplying it by this. And so now we have our equation. We can plug in our values. Our first omega right here, this is what we have, omega. It's going to be um, 240. And the reason why it's 240 is because even though we've turned this into a one, right? All of this right here, and I'm actually gonna do it in a different color. All of this right here is our omega. Because we know that when we rewrite this, we're gonna have cosine omega times t. That's what we have, right? Well, the pi is already taken care of. It's in our answer, right? And when we have one in here, when we say n is equal to one, it's just going to be 240. So we're gonna have 240 pi for this. Now we need to find the magnitude and the angle because we're writing it in the sine wave. And so to find the magnitude and to find the angle, what we can do is plug this equation into something like symbol lab that will help calculate it for us. We can see that I have plugged this in and I'm just gonna move it over here so it's a little bit easier to see. 
Um, I have 216, so that's the 216. I didn't put the summation, but that's okay, um, because I plugged in one where we should have a one here. 5,000, that's what the five times 10 cube is. And then I have the five times 10 cubed on the bottom right here. I have our J, which is this I, times our omega. Our omega here is 240 times the pi. We have omega times pi, or I'm sorry, we have 240 times pi. That's our total omega times 10 because of the 10. And then we have minus our omega squared um, times 0 0.125. So again, we have this 240 times 3.14 and then the squared 3.14 is just pi, and then we're multiplying it by 0 0.125. If I click go, it's gonna give us this value. So this is going to be our imaginary number and our real number right here. To convert this into the polar form, which is what we need it to be, we are going to have that the magnitude is equal to the square root of our real number squared plus our imaginary number squared, and the angle is equal to tangent negative one with our imaginary number over our real number. And so now knowing this, we can convert this, uh, what we just found up here, into the polar form so that we can actually plug it in and see the answer. So plugging this into a calculator, what we are going to get from this is 5.4. Also make sure your calculator is in uh, degrees when you do this specific part and then we get a 6.5 degrees. So that's gonna be the answer for this first part. Um, make sure I, I rounded everything. So if you have specific um, values or you need to be more specific, make sure you account for any rounding error. And now we are going to do the next one. So for this next one, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say, okay, well, all we need to replace in here in this part right here is the two, right? Because every, now the n has to equal two. So this next one, I plug the two in here, but that's not the only thing I changed. We can see that I have a 480 here now instead of the 240 where it was right here. And the reason why that's changed is because now, remember, the n, it was equal to one earlier, now n is equal to two. So we have two times 240 times pi. With that, that is gonna give us a 480 because two times 240 is 480. And so we are going to get this value right here. So I can plug this in and try to put it over here. And this is where we're gonna get. We're gonna do the same thing to convert it from the rectangular form into the polar form. And in doing this, we are gonna get zero point 26 as our magnitude um, we know that the omega now is 480 times pi because of what we have right here right we're plugging in the two so it's 480 and our angle is going to be a nice 3.1 degrees now we have to do the same thing but for the third one and this is our last one so all we're going to do is replace three in here remember that now n is equal to 3, so we're going to have 720 times pi for our omega. So let's go back to that. We have 720 times pi, 720 times pi, click and go, is going to give us this right here. So we can just write this right here, and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller so we can fit it, and I'll just put it right here. And so this is our last one. We again need to convert it into the polar form from the rectangular form. And in doing this, we are going to get an angle, or I'm sorry, a magnitude of approximately 0 0.049 at an angle of two degrees. And so that is how we would look at solving this problem. Um, I did have a lot of trouble with this problem at first, but that's because I wasn't given the actual equation that made this. But that again can be found in the previous video. That'll be at the top of the description, linked below the like button.